a very fond greeting to all, and we begin. We will entitle today's discussion Lessons on Discernment because it is an interesting time in which the messages that you receive are a little bit scrambled, a little bit mixed. Some are a little obscure, others a bit too defined. And so it makes it a little bit difficult for a mind or for a heart to discern what means the moment, what means the information. Do you simply digest it? Do you uncover it? Do you study it? Do you take it at face value? Do you invert it and shake it about and see if the fallout still fits? The messengers are many these days and the messages too. In essence, it is quite appropriate for it to be so, for, as we have said before, it is, after all, the end of a time and the beginning of the next. So it is time for some to fall back into the recesses of time and for others to take their rightful place forward. But not all know when or how to do so. So in the meantime, it is important to develop a knowingness, an awareness, an ability to detect and to discern from the highest or the deepest levels of truth that which is most useful to you. At the same time, sometimes it is just a little bit of information that is needed and that is well enough already so that not every moment must be studied or dissected for its relative truth. Just the same, we will explore the topic to the best of our ability, yes? First, we must explain why there are so many mixed messages at this time. In essence, it is important for it to be so, and although it is somewhat confounding to the brain, although the brain does not like to consider the relative truth of one versus another thought, it is important because if it is a different thought, the mind, brain in this case, is forced to take a different path in order to study it. It is forced to take a different stance, to view it from a different perspective. Perhaps it is too close so you take a step back. Perhaps I am too far away and I did not hear correctly. Say again. And then you hear the words the second time to see and feel how they will sound and how they will sit. And so in this case, the human brain, the part of you that thinks thoughts relative to this life, to this awareness, relative to your safety, relative to the continued future of this particular life path that you have chosen becomes part of the moment. So to differentiate for the sake of this conversation, brain or human brain, human thoughts are all those related to this life, the longevity of this life the continued existence of the human mind, of all of the life that you have constructed for yourself, all those things that you hold as valuable, all those relationships that you consider to be intimately yours, family, friendship, career, everything associated with this life takes a certain pathway in the brain associated with this. By contrast, mind, allows you to consider other lives, parallel lives, parallel thoughts, other realities, other junctures. And so for these thoughts, brain connects with mind. In essence, a little bit like a vacuum cleaner attachment. You are now able to reach a little bit further and to draw to yourself those things that you might not have been able to consider were you only thinking about this life. So mind allows you to reach to other dimensions, to other possibilities, to other paradigms, 
And yes, sometimes the switch over between human brain and mind is a difficult one. And of course, you know that there are certain individuals in your life that are even unable or unwilling to make the switch. So congratulate yourselves from the beginning that you are able to do so, whether it is a gentle experience for you or it is one that you must run as if you must catch the train before it leaves without you, still you are able to do so. Again, it is important at this time that there are mixed messages. After all, it is a blend time now between the end and the beginning, so it must be a good mix. A good mix contains old prophecies of these years and of thousands and thousands of years ago, all those contained in this last new age and even, even a few stragglers from an age even before the last one. A few thoughts, a few experiences that were never reconciled well a little bit to tag on to an age for the sake of reconciliation. It is all worthwhile. Perhaps you would agree. So mind and brain mix together. And the more confused either mind or brain become, the more that they are able to find a meeting place where a new thought can be evaluated, assessed, or dismissed. You would think, based upon what you know, that a mixed message would be very easy to ignore. But it is not. They niggle and nudge at you. They want you to consider them, to explore them. Perhaps eventually you will accept them or dismiss them or file them away for future use. But until that moment, they are able to take new and different pathways for you. So imagine that you take the same route to your occupation, to your job every day. After a time, you do not notice this or that any longer. It becomes part of the background, part of the ride, the drive to work. The same happens with thoughts. You begin to ignore those thoughts that you have had for a very long time. They too become part of your background until they are no longer even experienced by you. So when mixed messages come about in the way that they do, they force you to look at them, to think about them, to take different pathways as we have said. And so for the next few and several years even, there will be many different kinds of messages and some of these will be difficult and confounding and confusing to your thought, your memory banks and to all of the normal procedures that you occupy yourself with. So as we further this conversation then, let us explore some of the different kinds of messages that you receive so that you will be able to discern between these, understanding them a little bit more for what they are. They are all different kinds of thoughts to explore, but depending on where they come from or who they come from, that makes them a little bit different as well. Of course, one of the most purer or more interesting thoughts are those that we could call higher thought. So higher thought, to define it, might be a thought that you would not arrive at through your normal expressions of daily polarity. As we said, on your way to work where everything becomes almost part of the background of the day and not the day itself, it is difficult to arrive at a new thought or a higher thought. A higher thought requires a leap, even a small one, in consciousness. When you are joined by a spirit or an aspect of spirit, more than likely you will also receive a higher thought, something to consider that was not part of the prior moment something that exists now or that you had considered at one time but not in the moment. A higher thought floods the moment just for a moment. It becomes all-consuming like a spark 
just for the moment. Perhaps you might even call this a moment of aha. That is something new. Where did that come from, you might say. And it is because you have made at least a small leap in order to reach it. You have reached for it and grasped it. And for that moment, it becomes your thought, yours to consider, yours to evaluate, to discover, to claim, to enter, because sometimes these thoughts also lead through very interesting thresholds and doors. Higher thought, then, is not always mixed, but it can be contradictory. Imagine for a moment that you have considered a problem and you have finally arrived at a solution and you think, well, that's it then. That's the only way to go. It's the only thing I can do. I cannot see another way through this. That must be all there is. But then a higher thought presents itself to you and you now have something else to consider that you did not. Is it possible for this higher thought to have come from your human brain? No, not entirely. Remember that the human brain is known to consider itself routine. It is interested in its survival. It is interested in the continuation of what it already knows. However, it is possible that it was inserted into brain from mind. The part of you that feeds the hunger, the curiosity, the deeper interest. The part that says, that is not enough. I know there must be something more satisfactory, something more interesting. There must be a brighter light that I can see, and I will consider it further. Another kind of thought is an alternate thought. An alternate thought is just as it sounds. It alternates between one reality and another. It allows you to say not only what if, but if so. In what if, you can consider many different ideas, but most of the time you do not believe in your what ifs. You believe for the most part that they are impossible. And so the ideas associated with the what ifs, well, they become somewhat relegated to the impossible list as well. However, alternate or alternating thoughts then, like alternating current, come on and off and on and off and on and off until you find that when you are on and they are on, you have now a different thought, a different current, a different way to express the current of energy in and throughout your life. So an alternate thought gives you an alternate solution or another way to express, again, a different path for you to take, whether it is in a thought or an experiential manner. A challenging or opposing thought is another example. A challenge thought will come in opposition to what you already know, particularly if what you know comes from a stronger belief, and particularly if it has been with you for a very long time but has remained unproven. So if you have always believed that the sky is blue and could never be red under any circumstances, well, that may come to be challenged one day. Now, what part of you would be interested in challenging you or even being in opposition. Why be in opposition to yourself? In essence, to clear out the debris again, to clear out any belief system. It is well to believe in what you wish to believe, but like plaque that gathers in the bloodstream, a belief system, that becomes a little bit more difficult. Again, to have a belief, well then, that is well enough. But when a belief becomes part of an entire system, then all of those beliefs must work together, must support each other. And because beliefs rarely do that, they hide in and between each other, then, well, 
It is a little bit like hide and seek. You are forced to find the false one or the false belief that will then expose the rest. And many do not wish that to be the case. So instead, well, it is a little bit easier to live with a little falsity, knowing that there are truths associated with that or accompanying that. Perhaps there is enough truth in it that you can live with a few unproven beliefs, even if they are holding a little bit too much ground within you. These are some of the different thoughts that you have occupying yourself with you. And of course, this being a time of prophets and prophecies, well, all of these different kinds of thoughts are not only available, but a very important part of your time, of your evolution and time of discovery as well. Now, when some of these thoughts that come, that challenge or oppose or alternate, even these must be carried to you. If you have a strong belief system, it is rare that you will go out and away from that belief system in order to challenge it for yourself. However, because this is a time of evolutional leaps, the greater energies that surround you make certain to look out for your interests in the way that they do. So, surrounding you now are prophets and teachers, messengers and wisdom keepers, counselors and advisors, and even those that we will call provokers, for lack of a better word. And these also then cause you, instill within you the need to alternate thoughts, to be challenged, to oppose others or yourself as you seek the greater truth or the new pathways for brain and mind. In essence, remember that what you are doing at this time is building a new pathway or a new ladder to the higher awareness or the greater consciousness or the next age. So it is important that something from behind you, underneath you, push you a little bit so that you will climb a little higher or look a little further. And so the world is now full of those that enjoy doing just that. They serve a common purpose, they serve a greater purpose, and sometimes a personal one as well. Of course, the world now has prophets. Prophets are those that will propose an idea, most of the time having to do with the future. A prophecy most of the time has a caution or a warning associated with it. It is a prediction of things or thoughts to come. Sometimes predictions and prophecies were began long and longer ago, perhaps even in the last age, as was said, in those that did not prove themselves to be, but had so much energy surrounding them, well, in essence, they still live. They made it into the next age, perhaps even as an old wives' tale, but they made it, and so they drew a breath in the last age which gave them the ability to survive into this one. And of course, being that some of the prophecies were interesting, they live a little bit longer. Those prophecies that bring about dire circumstances or turn of events, they tend to live a little longer. Those that say that some thing, someone, will survive, but others not. They also have peak interest and live a little bit longer, sometimes taking on a life of their own. So prophets are those that carry prophecies, words of long ago that can now be altered, embellished, added upon, or in some way made to fit this paradigm. Yet we are not speaking of what is a right or a wrong prophecy, correct or incorrect. But now we are describing for you only the kind of thoughts that occupy this time 
and the kind of beings that bring certain thoughts that occupy this time. Beyond the prophets there are those that we will call teachers. Teachers, as the word implies, are those that you allow to impart teaching to you. So a teacher is not a teacher because they call themselves that or because it is their occupation. A teacher becomes a teacher when you allow yourself to be taught by them. When you accept something that they have offered and learn from it. When you see the value in this, they become a teacher for you or for that moment. So a teacher and a teaching exists in the moment. Perhaps you have noticed that much of the time you are able to transcend teachers and teachings. You outgrow them and you seek a next or a new. That is because they exist only in the moment and as long as the teaching is a worthwhile one and a necessary one where you are concerned. If it is not, well, they may be someone else's teacher. Their teaching may belong to another moment, another time, or another place, but it is not yours. So again, teachers are those not only capable of imparting to you something that you did not know or were not willing to accept before. They are the elected ones. You will allow them to offer something to you. You will accept it from them when perhaps you would not accept it from someone else. Messengers are others that bring certain thoughts. Messengers, well, it is somewhat of a much easier occupation. All they need do is deliver something to the right address, as it would be. Sign here, please. This package is for you. And most of the time, that is what messengers bring, a package of information, a packet of light, a packet of knowledge. In small bursts of energy, the messenger will deliver something to you. Perhaps it is something that you were hoping for or waiting for, wanting to discover, wanting confirmation. Messengers bring confirmation. They bring truth. They bring it in small amounts, just at the right moment, or perhaps left for someone else, but intended for you. So there are many, many messengers upon the world right now. There are those that are called wisdom keepers, and that is exactly what they do. They carry and protect certain wisdoms that transcend any age, any thoughts, any awareness. It is their job to keep them clean, to keep them protected so that these particular truths cannot be altered to such a degree that they would crumble. It is not that they cannot be evaluated or interpreted in many different ways, but wisdom must be kept not only for the wise, but it must be kept in a protected state so that it cannot be corrupted, so that a word that has a specific meaning in this time will also be correctly interpreted at another time. So that if it is one particular message, it can be expressed universally for others. It cannot be misinterpreted. It cannot do harm to another. So the wisdom keepers protect the kind of level of wisdom that cannot harm. It cannot be distilled. It must remain in its pure form. Does this mean that it is for everyone? Not necessarily. However, it must be kept in that state, pure, concise, and it must be kept available for those that are seekers of wisdom. Also, we will find at this time counselors, advisors. A counselor, in essence, allows you to use their knowledge to interpret messages or prophecies or knowledge that you have discovered or perhaps even a small piece of information that you cannot quite decide how to fit it in. 
So if you like, a counselor understands the pieces of the puzzle and where to locate them, what order they should go in. They assist you and the journey of the mind and brain to detour here, to change to the left there or to the right here or there. They are guides. They are advisors. They do not interfere in your process necessarily, but they will guide that process. They will walk with you for a time, for as long as you wish to include them in that walk. Imagine that even across a long desert, you may wish to have some company to explore some of those things that you have discovered. And of course, then, we must add at the end those that are provokers. <laughs> that is exactly what they do. They provoke what you have learned and said, did you truly learn that? Do you truly believe that? You know, I heard from someone else that was not as true as you thought. Are you certain? How do you know it's for real? And so they will provoke the very fabric that you are made of. And indeed, that is purposeful as well. Because it will keep you on your toes, if nothing else. Now, when confronted by a provoker, there is no need to defend. There is no need to say, look here, I have studied this well. I know of what I speak, I am certain of it. There is no need to defend, for then they will know that they have you, just like that. So instead, hmm, that is very interesting. Of course, I had considered that thought, but I dismissed it once I recognized that the wisdom that I had received was truly of service to me. You see, with a provoker, all you need do is find the peaceful place within you that is comfortable with what you have discovered, what you have chosen for yourself, even if it is a temporary choice. So to a provoker, you could say, hmm, I do find what you say rather interesting, and I will think about that. However, for the time being, this new discovery, or my present thoughts, are very suitable to me. I have taken a great liking to them, and I find that they assist me almost every day. And so, here you have, then, the different kinds of messengers that you find associated with many of the thoughts of this time. However, remember that our topic for today, after all, is discernment and what to do with all of the different thoughts and messages, some of them controversial, some of them, well, they are thought-provoking as well, just as the term would suggest. So we must have a how-to or a practical section of our gathering for today. Now, to discern means simply to discover a simple truth or a deeper truth. It can be either one. So to discern means to reduce to a simple value. That is the best way to put it. So if you will discern something, you will discover, is this useful for me now or does it belong to someone else? Or shall I set it aside for the time being? So discernment allows you to reduce an equation to a simpler thought, one that can be digested, one that you can engage in. So the more difficult something is to discern, the harder it will be for brain and mind because it will need to explore all of the different pathways all of the different aspects of that truth before it can do anything with it. After all, the wisdom part of you would not wish to simply swallow that pill and hope it's true. You would not simply wish to pass that along to another as truth unless you were certain that it was true. And so some part of you will want to, need to, explore all of the different pathways until you find discernment, your level of responsibility, your need and desire to respond to the moment itself will ask that of you. 
So in finding the best way to discern, the very first suggestion is to listen to what was offered. Now you have the ability to know what kind of thought it was. Was it simply a message or a higher thought? Was it an alternate thought? So what shall you do with it? How shall you consider it? Where will you place it? And then, of course, now you have a second thread, which is to consider who or what brought the message or the idea or the thought form to you. These will assist you in knowing where and what to do with them. So you listen first from within. Repeat what you have heard. Repeat it to yourself in as exacting the words as possible. See how they sound. Imagine that you have a puzzle before you. Can you see how they would fit into that puzzle? Will they help to complete that puzzle? Or in order to insert that puzzle piece, will you need to remove several other pieces that now do not fit? And is it worthwhile? In order to accept this one thought that has been brought my way, can I accept it and include it? Or must I dismiss it or other thoughts in order to claim it? What must I do in order to consider it or to make it mine? Can I reject some of it or all of it? Or must I take the entirety of it? So listen for the vibration that you feel as you repeat as much of it as possible to yourself. You see, it is one thing to hear a thought or read a thought as it was given to you by another because then it still belongs to them. You are only considering it. You are only the listener. But when you are able to repeat it in your own thought, in your own mind, in your own words, aloud or silently to yourself, then it takes on a different quality because now it is you speaking, communicating, with you. You would never mislead you. And so as you receive this counsel, you will be able to note how much of it sits well. Where does it sit? How does it sit? And you will listen for that. Take into consideration as well in what way it was delivered. Was it an opinion? Was it a fact? Was it a judgment? How was it delivered to you? Not simply by whom, but under what circumstances was it delivered? Was it put before you just casually? You may take it or leave it. Or was it put before you and said, this is of great importance. You must assess this. You must stop what you are doing immediately in order to consider this. Assessment then. Notice what is being said in the words as well, in the message as well? Is it a liberating thought or a confining one? Does it allow you to explore all of the different ideas associated with it? Or does it only offer you one or two or three ideas that you must claim as a house of cards? Or the basis of the entire thing will fall apart. Was it offered in polarity? In other words, if it doesn't go this way, that will surely happen. You see, if you don't move out of that city now, it will be ruined by an earthquake and it will have been your choice. You see, these, for instance, are dangerous words and they are indeed some of those that are being put forth at this very moment. So they challenge you these words. Well, I am not a fool, you would say. I do not wish to stay in a city that is about to be decimated by an earthquake. But what am I to do? Am I to leave go all that I know? Home, 
relationship, family and such, simply for my safety? What certainty do I have that any of this is true? Ah, and what if I ignore it? What if I ignore it at my peril? Do I ignore it simply because I did not wish to listen to the counsel of another at an opportune time? After all, this is a time of changes. Perhaps I ought to heed this warning. So here is something else for you to consider. Are they words of support or are they only cautions and warnings? You had better do this or else. You will notice that spirit in its deepest meaning, in its deepest roots, rarely says, or else. It rarely will say to you, well, that's the end then. <laughs> we'll look to the neighbor or the one across the street. This one's done for. No, sweet ones. And so here in discernment, you will note, what is the polarity of the message that is being offered? What alternating thoughts does it offer? What is the current? What is the electromagnetic current that flows through this? Is it smooth or is it erratic? Does it dart everywhere? And speaking of darting, imagine the one that has said the words. And if you have them at your disposal, take good look at their eyes as well. Are they darting about uncontrollably? Or are the eyes slow and steady and focused? See what is offered to you. The moment will tell you much more. If it is a prophecy that is offered, which is beyond that of an ordinary message, does it offer to you alternatives? Does it say... In this moment, this is what is seen to be the case. However, there are mitigating circumstances, awareness. There is yet will to be acted upon. Are there alternatives to be considered? Or are they simply the dire circumstances of an old, old age simply still living in this one? Remember that there are those without messages of their own or messages of their own merit. And they still wish to be messengers. So they will pick up an old tab, an old courier thought that was never quite delivered or delivered in the right way or with the right meaning. And, well, it looks purposeful enough. So there are those that will go about delivering messages that never were and never will be. So it is important to, yes, be in the full discernment that the moment will offer. Other than alternatives, what is practical about what is being offered, whether it is a message or a prophecy? What practical knowledge does it give you? What can you do with this? To do does not mean that you must take action. To do means how can you use it, even if it is a thought. Will this thought lead to other interesting thoughts? Does it lead to other avenues of expression? Is it useful to others? What alternatives are posed? How practical is what is being given? Again, practical does not necessarily mean that you must act upon it in the moment. However, even a thought to explore can be a practical thought. It is important. It is interesting to the mind. The mind wishes to consider it. Does it inspire you to learn, to discover about yourself, or to change something about yourself? That is another aspect to consider. Because when truth is put forward, it often offers to you many different sides of it. Truth is often filled with light, and light enters truth from a variety of different places. And so truth, as it is offered, 
is often inspiring you. It will inspire you to look further within yourself, to carry that thought for a little while, while you consider it. Truth inspires you to discover more of it, to delve a little bit deeper. Even something that is true at face value will allow you to change it. Prophecies can be changed somewhat easily. They do, however, require a certain action, a certain vibration. Are you willing, can you, are you interested enough in that thought or what was brought to you to change it, to alter it? Not simply to make it more believable or more palatable, but to hold it in such a way that it becomes more potent, more powerful. Continuing with the discussion on discernment, when you have received a certain message, vital as it would be, do you find yourself wanting to share it with others? Look what I have discovered today. Look what was brought to my attention. I have found this so very interesting. Or instead, do you find that you must whisper it to someone, first to disclaim its accuracy, and then to share about it in a quiet giggle. Oh, look what I read today. Look what came my way today. Look what landed on my desktop today. Here is another one of those messages. What shall we do with this one? Do you think there's any truth in this one? I don't believe it, do you? Well, I heard of something similar, but, well, I am not certain. What do you think, you see? So if it is something that you must whisper about, but you are not willing to claim for yourself, even in the consideration of it, that is somewhat an answer to the question as well. Again, ask yourself, do you know the source, the true source of the message? Is it one that is encouraging? It is supportive. Has it been of encouragement or support to you in the past? So if you receive such a message, take the time to trace it back to its origin. Now, where did that come from? Was it simply repeated? Was it sent and re-sent and perhaps altered? And so find the true vibration for this. Find the source. If the message is a resource, then the original aspect of it can be a source. And that source should be of encouragement and support to you in more than one way or more than one time. Once you discover the source of this, whether it is embodied or disembodied, or from this age or another age, ask yourself as well, would I care to have an additional conversation with this person or with this being? For instance, would I care to dine with them, share a cup of tea or coffee and explore other ideas? Are there other ideas that this one may have that are of interest to me or is it simply that I want to know is this truly real you see so here again take the time to know and to notice follow the path if you can follow the path of one of your thoughts to see where it will go to or where it has come from then certainly do the same with another message or a greater truth regarding the same person or the same being, what is their further approach to life itself? Do they approach life with a sense of simplicity and curiosity and trust? Or are they distrustful of others? Are they distrustful of the words of others? Do they trust what is put before them? Or do they walk in the shadows? unless they, and only they, are in the light of the moment. All of these will give you not only clues, deeper clues, as to the message itself, but certainly, certainly, 
they will tell you more about yourself and they will hone your ability they will make your mind sharp your mind will yet remain curious it will remain open your heart open and deeply heart felt it is not that you will challenge every thought that comes your way remember that to discern is to distill it will take those truths those measures those measure, messages that come to you and it will reduce them to the simple truth or that which is most practical and useful to the moment or it will say to you this one can be set aside or dismissed as the case may be other clues that you may use to your advantage does the prophecy begin with you may not believe this but well if it is already put to you that you may not believe it then perhaps then there is very little of it to believe in yet you will find that there are many particularly the provokers that will begin this way sweet ones i tell you that you will not find a wisdom keeper beginning a word or a thought that way for it would be a disservice to you and to what they have brought to protect of those that consider themselves prophets or wise do they tout their credentials to you and yet at the same time set aside what other people have said do they put themselves before others in their ability to say they maintain a higher truth a higher order or a higher wisdom if it is one that will set oneself above another even to an exacting degree here perhaps even i would say to you take care and beware will they tell you what will happen if you don't heed their words is it a caution that they offer to you you had better do this or else you had better do this or if you don't well it will be upon your own shoulders you will be left behind you see sometimes they will not actually say these words but you will feel them you will almost hear them you will hear them whispered upon the breath even if the words are not verbal look to the prophecies is there a perceived reward or punishment associated with what is being said those that attend this particular event will be rewarded with great knowledge and those that cannot well perhaps there will be another one and perhaps not you see implied in these words are that if you do not if you cannot you may after all be left behind which is a punishment of one degree or another when you hear the prophecies of this time well it is the time of prophecies after all and they have a way of being worded and woven to make them sound very interesting even if you want to turn away it is so difficult to do that well i'll listen to what they have to say i know i won't believe it but as long as i'm here i'll listen as long as i've already begun reading it i'll read it well what is it about it that is so interesting is it the potential threat implied within it is it that the reality is so different or so impossible that the mind wishes to consider the impossible because it does you know and so take into consideration in the proper context whether you are interested in the subject at hand or whether you are simply titillated by it either way is of great interest and matters not but matters only in the acknowledgement because a titillating thought can be considered by the mind or the human brain and explored in a variety of creative and exhilarating ways as long as the mind knows not to build it into your reality 
you see. It may be interesting to imagine that there is a carousel or a merry-go-round in your backyard, but you would not truly build one there. And so it is the same with these kind of thoughts. Pay it particular attention to the message itself then. Is it a focused message? Is it concentrated in a certain area? Does it speak to that particular interest of yours? Or is it distracting? Is it sprawled out so that you must go gather it back as if you must put all of the facts back into a basket and string them together in the right order? Has someone just sprawled out based on all of the different aspects of this time and left you to pick up all of the little pieces and see if you can make something out of it or not? Well, perhaps it is best to find either a particular interest in it or a particular teacher that you would be willing to hear the same words from, but only if they were arranged in a way that is of benefit to you. Now, imagine that you have this very prophet, this very messenger, sitting before you. Once they have delivered their message, how would they complete it, do you think? Might they say to you, well, that's all I know. That's all I heard. That's all that was given. I hoped for more, but that's all there was. But I offer it to you just the same. Take it or leave it. Perhaps one day I will have more to add to it. And if there is any part of it that is not well to your liking or well received, then do set it aside, for I have no interest in bringing to you harm or even confusing. That is one option. Or, instead, there are those that cannot quite leave it be. Near the end, they must embellish it just a little bit more. They must add or tack on to it other bits and pieces. They must add some of their own experiences or let you know what some of their own decisions are based on what has been offered, leaving it to you to see if you will also agree with that or not. So here you see I have given to you a variety of examples. I have taken these from your very daily experiences. In fact, just before I have visited with the channel, I have visited upon many of those that I know carry messages, some of them on my own behalf, and some of them on the messages or errands of others of great proportion and great teaching. But I have also visited with those that are confused and confounded, a little bit afraid and a little bit uncertain. And these messages are also being carried and put forward in the written form, in a verbal form, and in all of the different ways in which frequencies and vibrations are able to communicate and to carry communiques. So it is a time for discernment then. It is a time for the wise and at the same time the half-wise live just next door. The half-wise are those that will settle for a truth even one that is not well developed. The half-wise will settle for a smaller truth if it does not preoccupy them or if they need not go in search of that truth or to develop it on their own or to discern it on their own. The half-wise are those that will wait and see what plays out. The half-wise will watch to see what you do and depending upon how you do that, they will comment upon it. They will have opinion upon it, perhaps even judgment. The half-wise look to the new without having taken the time to digest the old. The next day or the next meal or the next teacher, whatever is most new, 
whatever the new or next day brings. Take time, sweet ones. Take the time to develop and to discover everything that a day offers. Every bit of life that a day offers is yours to take. Every thought, every mindful walk that you take, every considerate detail on your own behalf or that of others, every extension of yourself, every way in which you may extend or explore yourself in a day, that contains much wisdom, wisdom that can be shared, wisdom that can live on its own. So be it. It is a simple topic that I have brought to you today, and yet it is profoundly important at this time. Look into the eyes of those that greet you. It is a difficult thing to do sometimes. See how quickly one wishes to avert their eyes, to look at the ground or to look just beyond the shoulders of another, to look just above their head, just beside them, as if there was something just a little bit more important or interesting there. Look into the eyes of those whom you know. See there something, someone much like yourself. Look into that truth and there you will find your own truth as well alongside brothers and sisters and cousins all seeking what you are seeking. I bring to you this moment of wisdom to share with you for the simplicity of the moment. I take my leave now until the next moment brings us together. I bid you good day.